Now, Jamal Khalifi is the only person so far who says Yazid admitted to poisoning his wife, Rosemary. But Khalifi has a, uh, he has a criminal record. And he fled the country in the early 90s to avoid prosecution on federal charges. So you have to wonder, how credible is this guy? With me now to talk about Khalifi's testimony is criminal defense attorney John Manuelian. John, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. So I appreciate your insight. So let's talk about Mr. Khalifi here. First of all, uh, he was convicted of state tax evasion, as we understand it. He helped hide the defendant overseas, and he's been given immunity for his testimony. So it makes me wonder, as a defense attorney, how do you use that information? You've got to attack him. You've got to say that he's dishonest. He committed a crime of uh, dishonesty, specifically tax evasion or a federal crime. You've got to say that this guy is nothing but a rat trying to cry, crawl out of a hole. And that'll do anything to lie, including lying against his family member. And what you want to do as a defense attorney is to get him on inconsistent statements, keep him talking, go into details, ask him, for example, he's talking about bragging about the murder. I would go into details about it. When did he brag? Who did he brag to? What was he doing at the time? You want to paint a picture that this guy's desperate and is doing anything that he can to get what he wants, specifically to get out of these federal charges. Okay. And, and at this point, he's the only one. Uh, at this point, again, who contends that uh, Issa admitted to killing his wife. So whether it's true or not, uh, I guess I, I'm wondering, that seed's been planted in the jury. How do you strategize against that? Simple. You, you argue that there is no connection, physical connection, between the calcium pills, the cyanide that was on the calcium pills, and Dr. Issa. And the only connection that they have is this motive that was fabricated by uh, Jamal Khalif. And you also point to the fact that there are two other witnesses that may have been suspects in the murder, specifically Michelle Madeline and uh, Margarita Montanez, that were not uh, part of the investigation. And this was nothing but a rush to judgment based on the playboy lifestyle of Dr. Yazid Issa. So if you discredit the testimony of Jamal Khalif and you point the picture to an investigator that rushed to judgment, you may be able to get a couple of jurors to persuade that he did not commit the crime. Okay, but th here's the thing. There's this recurring argument that seems to be, on the surface, most detrimental to the, the defense, and that is the fact that Issa fled the country. How do you tackle that hurdle? Well, just the way you would do any kind of uh, situation where there's a fugitive um, on the run, you would say that he didn't run because he thought he was guilty. He ran because he feared that the investigators would rush to judgment, which is what they did in this case. That once the investigators found out that he was having an affair with Madeline and possibly Montanez, that the suspicions would turn to him. And legitimately, he could have been in Lebanon, and he could have been innocent. And remember, during the trial, there are jury instructions that specifically say that the defendant is innocent. He's presumed innocent, is sitting there innocent until proven guilty. So even though the flight uh, could be considered by the jury, you hammer down that Jamil Khalif is not telling the truth. You point a picture uh, to the investigators that they rushed to judgment, that they didn't fully investigate the case, and you just basically say, look, during the voir dire, you do this also. You say, would it make a difference to you? Can you convict somebody strictly on the fact that he fled the country? The answer is no. There's got to be some sort of connection or a nexus between the uh, cyanide pills and uh, Dr. Yazid Issa. And that's the only way you can do it in this case. It's difficult, but that's the only thing that you should be focusing on. But what about the alleged mistresses in this case? They're going to take the stand. And I I'm wondering how potentially damaging you think that could be for Mr. Issa. Very, very damaging. It's, um, if you get two women, uh, first of all, you got Madeline that's saying that uh, she was having an affair and she knew it was wrong and she's going through emotional problems or mental problems. So that helps cast credibility on her and her veracity to tell the truth. So you've got a problem with her and you've got a problem with Montanez. But again, what you want to do is you want to cross examine these witnesses and make it look like they also had motive to see that. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Issa's wife disappeared, specifically that they were both in love with the guy and they wanted to be with him. And additionally, this person, Dr. Issa, didn't want to get a divorce from his wife. You want to establish that he was happy. You want to establish that he had two children and 
he wanted to have a third baby with the wife. So if he wanted to stay with the wife and have another kid with the wife, why would he kill his wife? Mm -hmm. and, you answer, and you answer that by saying he wouldn't want to kill his wife. Additionally, what's the most important uh, evidence that you want to hit on the jury is why would this doctor voluntarily give over the calcium pills with right. the cyanide to the police if he knew that there was cyanide on the pill? That is something that should also be shed to light uh, during the closing arguments. It does seem to be huge. And my question to you, if you were defending him, uh, real quickly, would you put him on the stand? Would you put Issa on the stand? It depends. It all depends on how he told me the story and how he came across and whether or not he came across as arrogant or sympathetic. Uh, it's very difficult to tell. Only the attorney could make that judgment call. But if my client, or Dr. Issa, if he was my client, was sympathetic and he seemed to come across as somebody that the jury may believe, I may put, a, put him on the stand, but remember something, he could be a loose cannon. Mm -hmm. He could say things that may hurt his case, even though, he's not, even though he is innocent, he may say some things that the jury may not like. Uh, for example, that he did have affairs on the side, that he did tell his wife uh, you know, to shut up and sit down during an incident that J Jamal Khalif testified to. So they might not like him. It's sort of the Scott Peterson uh, syndrome where if you don't like the defendant, you don't want to put on the defendant on the stand because they might hold his character or his arrogance against him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He's not a likable guy the way, obviously, it's being presented. Thank you so much, uh, John Manuelian. We appreciate hearing from you. Thank you. Sure. Now, Jamal Khalifi helped 